Thank you for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. Thank you for subscribing. That's important as we lead into the hurricane season. So I appreciate you building this weather community. That's how we do it. So thank you for taking the time to subscribe. El Nino, it is ending. La Nina begins. I want to get into that. The two areas I'm watching for development and I want to look ahead to what could change the upcoming hurricane season. Now, this is what's going on now. I want to start with that and then we'll get into what to expect down the road, especially uh, in early June. Here's Central America right through here. So Guatemala, El Salvador, you get back toward Mexico. This pocket here in the Atlantic Ocean, that is cooling and that is a sign of La Nina headed our way and that's a sign of the end of El Nino. It is pretty much done with. Now here, going out in time, this is May. So this is May as we get into uh, summer, September. That's next year. El Nino just about out of the picture once it hits this line. So it's pretty much done with. I know that some of these maps are crazy, but I like to show you everything I'm thinking and seeing behind the scenes. I don't like to leave anything out for you. So uh, here's what's happening now with La Nina. It's going to be a quick turn. So we had El Nino. Now El Nino only lasts usually nine to 12 months. So that's been on track. But what is a little unusual is how quickly we go from uh, El Nino to La Nina. La Nina would be this blue shading you're seeing here. You see June, July, and August. And as we get into the heart of the hurricane season, we get into an El Nino cycle and a pretty strong one. What the heck does that mean? Well, that's what I want to break down. Let me kind of pull it back first and get into what we can expect over the next few weeks leading into the hurricane season because we could see early season development. This here is the June rain outlook. So here's the Caribbean and you see right through here where you're seeing the green and the blue that would be above average rain. Now once we get into June a lot of us many of our islands we get into the wet season so we expect that we get into the wet season over toward Florida and parts of the Bahamas but the the blue in the green Green you're seeing here, that's not only the wet season, that's above average rain. So that has my attention that we're going to have a lot of moisture in here. So that means that's one ingredient for uh, the potential of some development, especially as we get into late May and early June. But there are other ingredients in play. There are so, so many. One, the water temperatures. Now, the water is usually always warm uh, in the hurricane season, but one thing a little different from this season uh, or this season from some of the last few is that it's so abnormally warm. We're running way above average. Gulf of Mexico, back through the Caribbean, and look at some of these darker reds. Some of the water temperatures are more like what we'd have in July versus May. Getting a look at those water temperatures, you see here, hugging the coast of Honduras and Nicaragua, right around 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit, so above average. We're not just warm, we are running more like June or July with some of the water temperatures. And even in the Eastern Pacific, 31 degrees Celsius, 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Usually though, as we transition to a La Nina period, that means we're a little less active in the Eastern Pacific. Sometimes when one basin is active, the other one is not so active. And that's what we'll see this year. But since we're just transitioning, both basins, the Pacific side and the Atlantic, could both be pretty uh, active, especially with these water temperatures. But another thing that could throw a wrinkle in things, which would be a good wrinkle. Now, I don't wish dust upon uh, anyone because uh, if you have breathing issues, uh, I get it. Um, and uh, many of us have been dealing with that. But here's the dust, and we have that dust in place right now across much of the Caribbean. It's been one of our thickest batches. Now, the dust is a big variable because it's really hard to forecast. It's hard to get a, a long-term projection on that. Uh, a lot of dust stretching back from uh, Africa all the way just gets caught on the trade winds all the way into the uh, Caribbean stretching back to Central America. So it's kind of a wait and see on the dust. Sometimes you have all these ingredients for a very active hurricane season and then you have dust and stable air that just sneaks in. That's a possibility and that's why I caution. I know there's a lot of videos out there saying it's going to be the scariest hurricane season ever. Well, there's no telling on that yet. We There's no way of knowing that. At least I don't know that yet. I do believe there are going to be a lot of named storms where they go and the other variables in play. It just it, We just need to take it storm by storm. Now, usually in a La Nina cycle, I mentioned there'll be a lot of named storms. In a La Nina period, that does typically mean more named storms, and here's why. 
there's usually less wind shear. Wind shear is the, the air up above uh, that would kind of come across and knock off the tops of thunderstorms developing. So wind shear is actually a good thing in a lot of cases to break apart uh, developing hurricanes. In a La Nina cycle, there's less wind shear. That allows the storms to bubble up more and to develop, and that usually means more hurricanes and more tropical storms. But a couple things with that. There are those other variables like the pockets of dust we may have, and this doesn't tell us where a storm may go. What I need to see is as we get into the hurricane season and as storms develop, uh, the steering conditions out there at the time. So there could be a million storms, but if they stay over the water, we'd be in good shape. But sometimes the tropics are also our friend. A lot of us need the rain, so hopefully we can maybe get a weak system around for some of us to at least get some beneficial rain. But this is what I'm seeing. In the short term, as we get through the end of May and early June, these are the two spots in particular I'm watching for development. Of course, on the Eastern Pacific side, that makes sense. Hurricane season starts earlier on the Eastern Pacific, May 15th. It doesn't start for the Atlantic Basin, the Atlantic Caribbean, and the Gulf until June 1st. So this area does look like it may develop as soon as next week. We could see some development over the next 7 to 10 days right in here, so I'll watch out for that. But in the Western Pacific, there's the possibility of some development later this month. A few reasons why. The water temperatures and uh, what we're seeing with the increased amount of moisture here. So watching Jamaica back toward Belize and Nicaragua. Not a lot of moisture yet. We have some of the dust around. But late this month, early in June, we may get more moisture building here while more of the dust could be over here. And that may spark up something. Plus, you get these old fronts in the U.S. that could leave leftover moisture. So the Western and Central Caribbean, I'll be watching that very closely later this month in early June for development. And right on cue, we are seeing things really cranking up as far as rain is concerned for some of us. Costa Rica and Panama, the next three days, this white shading here, the black shading in spots, 100 to 150 millimeters of rain or four to six inches of rain. So things are getting more active. And that's one of the reasons why, too, we're going to see some of this moisture moving off into the eastern Pacific that we could get some development uh, next week. There's just a lot of moisture to play with, but not so much here. Uh, San Andres, uh, Providencia, as you get toward Honduras and Nicaragua, mainly dry. But later this month, early next month, we could see some moisture building there. Now, some other spots where we need to get some rain. Well, some spots we also don't need to get some rain. Antigua yesterday. We got hit hard with some flooding. And that's what we've been seeing over the last week is that just certain islands, certain spots have been getting a lot of rain. Puerto Rico, we've seen it. Parts of the Virgin Islands, St. Croix, for example, the Dominican Republic. Curacao last week, we had some rain. Well, about a week ago, we had some uh, flooding. So uh, over the next three days, northeastern and northern Caribbean, the rain totals aren't too high, 25 millimeters to 50 millimeters or one to two inches. But we will have some localized spots that get some more like we had in Antigua yesterday. So I'll just be watching that as we slide over the weekend and the next few days to see if we have any flooding. But there's the moisture there. And you see on the eastern Pacific side, the rain there. Trinidad, we are just dusty. The rain chance so low, even over toward Grenada. I'll show you those forecasts in just a second. Uh, spotty showers and storms, though. Northeastern Caribbean stretching back toward Haiti and the Dominican Republic. So we'll see if we do get any of that rain setting up, we could still see some flooding. So as we go from today into this weekend, the pattern is going to hold where Costa Rica, Panama, parts of Colombia were wet watching the dust, St. Lucia, Barbados, ABC Islands, and there are those spotty showers and storms, Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. We'll have a few on the way for our Saturday. Bahamas, mainly on the dry side, and we're very hot across uh, Cuba. Cayman Islands, mainly dry. Sunday, just a hit or miss shower storm. Same thing, passing showers possible. Guyana and Suriname, though, that rain chance will be elevated as we go throughout the weekend. The bigger picture, we've been watching rounds of severe weather in the U.S. Panhandle of Florida by Tallahassee got hit hard earlier this morning with tornadic activity and some straight line winds and it's going to be some rounds of systems up here and that's why I was mentioning earlier too as you get these systems up here sometimes they leave behind moisture and sometimes that can develop into something tropically Bermuda tomorrow the rain chance will be higher with that system moving off but as one leaves another one starts to move in and you see a flare-up of rain and storms on Sunday Texas Oklahoma watching the severe weather threat back toward uh, parts of uh, Kansas 
Texas, even lifting up toward uh, Nebraska again, and then Mississippi over toward uh, Alabama, Louisiana, Arkansas, that chance of some rain and storms. Now these systems wind down over toward the mid-Atlantic in New England, and as I was showing you yesterday, most of the rain was trying to squeak south of uh, Newfoundland. Keep me posted in the Atlantic region, uh, Canada, uh, if you get rain or if you don't get rain, watching uh, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and Nova Scotia, and you see tomorrow afternoon how we're on the edge of some rain, and there's more rain. Toronto stretching back toward Pittsburgh, so uh, Quebec uh, moving over toward Montreal. We'll see that chance of some scattered showers as we work our way into our Sunday as our next system moves in, but Newfoundland on Sunday, a better chance of rain, even some colder rain or at least some snow trying to squeak in to our northern tier. So Jamaica for us through the weekend, a 30 to 40% chance of showers and storms. Let me know in Jamaica if you're getting dust where you are. Keep me posted in the comments, put your location. I'll be uh, trying to go back and forth with you over the next few days. Cayman Islands, we're mainly dry, but we could see a little dust around too. Trinidad and Tobago, we are dry and we are hot. There is a small chance of a shower, but you can see it's not high. Trinidad through Barbados, and back through St. Lucia, a 10, maybe 20% chance as we go through the weekend. And this includes Grenada, where we do need to get some rain at this point, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and the rain chance stays low over the next seven to day, 10 days. I was showing you that in yesterday's video. Martinique, rain chance about 20%, a 10 to 20% chance in Dominica, some dust around, and a 20% chance right through the weekend in Guadeloupe. Rain chance in Tiga and Barbuda today, watching it closely because of the flooding we had yesterday. Still slightly elevated chance for today. 20 to 30% chance, St. Kitts, Nevis, and Montserrat, and a 30 to 40% chance in Anguilla and St. Bart. St. Martin, St. Anastasia, rain chance trending down Sunday, only a 20% chance of a shower and an even 60% chance. Still a lot of runoff in Puerto Rico. We're going to see that chance of some areas of flooding as we go throughout the weekend. U.S. and British Virgin Islands, scattered showers and storms will be possible right through the uh, weekend. 30% chance in the Dominican Republic and a 20 to 30% chance in Haiti Saturday and Sunday. Rain chance in the Bahamas were, were mainly on the dry side, could get clipped by a shower here and there. Turks and Caicos, rain chance pretty low, 20%. Belize, we are too dry, we are too hot. Keeping an eye on Belize, I was going over our forecast for the next 7 to 10 days in yesterday's video in Belize and Honduras. Aruba, Curacao, Bonaire, watching some of the dust. If we get rain, it would kind of, uh, we'd be lucky as long as it's not too much because that rain chance is just not high. Guyana and Suriname, that's where that rain chance has been higher. Cuba, it would only be an isolated shower or thunderstorm popping up in the afternoon. Costa Rica and Panama, there's that high chance of rain, but we get to the north in Honduras, that rain chance stays on the low side. Yucatan and Mexico over toward Cozumel, Cancun, uh, rain chance at minimal and a 20 to 30 percent chance in northern Venezuela. Tomorrow in Bermuda, like I was showing you with that front, a 50 percent chance of some rain and some gustier winds. So watching the tropical ingredients over the next few weeks, kind of finding the areas where we may start to see some development, especially late May, Western and Central Caribbean and the Eastern Pacific. There could be some development as soon as next week and tracking those areas of dust. So thank you so much for subscribing. I hope you're doing well and I hope you have a good weekend ahead.